Have you are you a fan of this franchise? Do you like the Minions? <laughs> have you ever seen one of these? A Despicable Me movie? Yeah. No, just from what I do. Are you art. fucking kidding me? Hey, welcome in everyone. This is Into the Geekverse. My name is Phil. And I am Zach, and we are both your host for this excellent podcast where Phil tries to join me about two to three times a month. Mm -hmm. Our other host, Tyler, will be joining us on the following episode. But I wanted to grab Phil one more time before the end of the month because... How kind of you. Well, you know why. We're going to Comic-Con, man. That's right. San Diego Comic-Con specifically. None of those smaller ones. Not New York Comic-Con. Maybe one day we'll go there. That would Maybe. be fun. That would be fun. I, I've never been to New York Comic-Con, but I have been to New York. Have you? Nope. I you went to been. Salem, though, up there, yes, right? I yeah. I went to Massachusetts, visited Boston, and then we went to Salem on Halloween. That's cool. And it was it was beautiful. That's really I cool. absolutely loved it. See, the only time I've ever been on the East Coast up there, towards that area i don't really know what it's exactly mm -hmm. called but would be new york i flew up for 24 hours to see dune early oh, literally wow. I, I don't even know why i got a hotel it was a waste of money because i got i took a red eye got there checked in dropped my shit off walked to the theater waited in line for like two three hours mm -hmm. where i got food right beforehand watched dune went back passed out woke up two hours later got on another flight and left no way. That's yeah, a, yeah. That's and so it was much. it was a cool experience. Mm -hmm. I wish I spent more time in New York, but it was like I didn't have more any time off. I I just wanted to see Dune early. Yeah. Guess what happened right when I came home? What? I got a screener invite. Oh. For the same week. <laughs> so it was still cool. I still got to see it. It helped the channel. And oh damn, I hit that damn wire. But uh, man, this is gonna be exciting. I'm really excited mostly for this episode because i've always wanted to do a san diego comic-con preview mm -hmm. but i've never been able to do it on my channel because you know who's who's really gonna watch that but they might watch a podcast of it That's so fair. we're gonna talk about that but for everybody who doesn't know this is into the geek verse we've revamped this is episode four like you said mm -hmm. And we're going to go through the different segments. We're going to go through rest stop rambles where it's just us kind of shooting the shit, catching okay. up over the week. Then we're going to jump into our reviewing segment where we're going to review anything that maybe we watched, played, or done that week. It could be older films, could be newer films, or even TV shows or video games per se, like the video game you're going to talk about today. That's right. And then we're going to jump into the main topic, which again is our San Diego Comic-Con preview. A lot of it, we're going to mostly talk about what Marvel is bringing because as we are recording this, we know Marvel is going. They are the official ones. There's a couple other things that kind of got announced that Phil still doesn't know about, but I'm going to bring up with him. We're going to talk live about it. I'm going to get his opinion, see if he wants to do them or not. Mm -hmm. And then last but not least, we're going to take your viewer questions. So, Phil, how's your week been? It's been pretty good, man. Um, over the weekend, I've obviously been playing a lot of games. Mm -hmm. So, I'm have excited. you played anything other than the one you're going to review today? Uh, just the same ones in the okay. same franchise. Yeah, and I mean, I just played a little bit of Tarkov, a little yeah. bit of um, Starship. Play a little some, bit more of that. Yeah, I played a little bit of it. I, I have something to ask you then. What's this up? ring? How's your internet? It's actually, oh my god, it, it's so much better now. Yeah, thank goodness. The I, for those who don't know, I have Cox Internet. And who loves Cox? I, I don't well, know. not I, those Cox. Yeah. <laughs> Cox. C-O-X. X, yes. Not C-O-C-K-S. Dude, it's just... Maybe some people out there do. It's just been a pain in my ass, dude. It's like... <laughs> Literally. Yeah. Uh, it's been Cox either, in the ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've just been either... I'll have like really stable... And just functional internet, but yeah. it would be the slowest speed ever. Yeah. Or I have really good internet speeds and it just, yeah, it just turns off and on all the time. The packet it's, loss, right? Yeah, the packet loss. It drives me nuts and I can't play like multiplayer games at all because of But it. now it's working. Yeah. So how many times so did it take you to yell at Cox? Uh, I mean, I have them on my contacts list. Yeah. That helps. Yeah. And then uh, I think it took him like two calls since I... Yeah. Talk Isn't it crazy that the second you call them, everything know. just works? Yeah. And then, like, if it still doesn't work, that second person you call when you say, this is my second time calling, mm -hmm. it magically works. I know. It's so wonderful. I understand it's never, like, the customer people who, like, help you out, fault or anything. Uh, no, I disagree with that. Really? Sometimes. I know, like, usually I'm pretty nice towards the mm -hmm. customer service people. Um, and I never try to get like really mean, yeah. but 99% of the time 
I fully believe it is the customer. And I work, and I'm not going to say where I work, but I work on phone calls. Mm -hmm. 99% of the time, there is a problem. It's not the system. It's someone fucked up beforehand. Ah. And I now have to fix that. So the, the, re the reason I say that is because when I was moving into my house, I had to call Cox, get my modem and router all set up. And the guy like did not understand what anything I was saying. I said, hey, I already talked to someone. I just wanted to confirm. He told me to give you the serial number and all this information. You'll be able to set it up. I can't do that. Okay, can you get me to someone who can? No, I would be the person that can do that. And then he tells <laughs> me that the modem and router, or I don't remember, one of the two, was not compatible. And so I said, really? Because on the box it says compatible with Cox Internet. Mm -hmm. And I also called beforehand to make sure, oh, also my parents used the same one that I set up with your guys this before. Yeah. So I know this works. Oh, okay. So I give him the route, like all the numbers and stuff. He's like, check in an hour, it should work. Nope. So it didn't work. Called back. The second person I told talked to, super nice lady. Very nice. Looks into my issue. Do you know if he did, I don't remember the word. Do you know if he did this? Doesn't sound familiar. She checks. Nope, he didn't. No. She goes, yeah, that's why you have no internet. Oh. Is because he did not start it, basically. Mm -hmm. Okay. So gave her the same information. 30 minutes later, totally working. Oh. I was on the phone call with that man for two hours. Oh. So no. this this is why I'm saying, man, sometimes it is. Yeah. And sometimes I it is. could. Do we want to keep ranting about her? Because, no, dude, I mean, they... I, dude, I got one about Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Walmart online? Uh, fuck them. <laughs> oh, okay. Dude, That's I. A different. I. I've never been mean in a chat until then. Oh, really? Because they, so I pre-ordered something, mm -hmm. but then I found it better on like Amazon, like a better deal. So I canceled it there, but it would not cancel. It was like oh. six months out. And I'm like, okay, maybe it's going to just take some time. Yeah. Two months passed, still not canceled. But it says we're trying to cancel it, but it may have already shipped. Really, it's not out yet. So I go on the chat nine times through this chat, maybe even more. Every time I, I get told it'll get canceled in a couple in a couple days. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. I get to one person. I take screenshots. I'm, and this person's like, I just talked to my tech specialist. They are completely for sure saying that this is canceled on there and nothing is going to get shipped. Mm -hmm. Two weeks later, it got shipped and I got charged. Oh, bro. I went off. I went off. I was so mad. I was so pissed off. What did you order? A fucking movie, <laughs> which like it was the fact that I got told multiple times that it was canceled. Exactly. And then, then the last person was so sure of what he was telling me and he was a liar. So <sighs> I'm just tired of it. I'm just so tired of the world. Like I miss when I could just go to the store and I could buy something, you know? Did you miss like GameStop days? Where I, still go go GameStop. I still like, go to GameStop. I still go to GameStop. I still go to GameStop. I'm one of the only people that has never talked shit about GameStop. You ever been to like EB Games? Or, uh, back uh, in the day, yeah. Hollywood Video? Uh, back in the day, yeah. Same with, um. what was the other one? Blo Blockbuster? Blockbuster. Uh, blo yeah, yeah, there used to be one right next to me. See, I'm I'm all physical media. That's all I am. Like mm -hmm. if I can buy some, if it if there is a digital copy of the game, but then they say there's a physical copy, I will buy the physical copy. Mm -hmm. Dead Rising, uh, the remaster just got announced. That's right, and it looks awesome. It looks mm -hmm. really cool. I'm super excited. I'm sure you are too. Yeah, yeah, man. They just keep making Frank more and more ugly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, he very ugly. But they announced digital only at first, and I was like. <sighs> So I was ready to pre-order it, and then they came out, and there's like, no, 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 digital first, September, mm -hmm. and then in October, the physical copy comes out. I'm like, oh. I'll wait. I'll wait one month. I've already played the game. I, yeah. It's going to be the same stuff. I'll wait for the physical copy. Now, I'm not going to lie. There's been times where I've bought a physical copy and a digital copy mm -hmm. because I wanted to play it and not wait for the shipping to come Um like, especially if it's like a special edition, like mm -hmm. I, and then I, what I end up doing is just, uh, or like sometimes what I've noticed is like a, a lot of special editions now, like the last God of War one pissed me off because it was a physical, it, it had the box, it had a steel book in it, but it came with a digital code inside. Oh. So Tyler wanted the game 
And what I ended up doing was he just paid me. I pre-ordered another physical copy, took the disc out, or I kept the physical copy and then just gave him the digital copy. You know what? I think... Um, a lot of games are doing that now. Yeah, I think even Fallout 76, because I they pre-ordered did, yeah. a special crazy edition that came with the helmet and the yeah. canvas bag. And uh, they put the, the copy or the CD... It was a cardboard CD. Yep. With the code on. Yep. It. Like, exactly. Oh, so many studios are doing that now. So like a lot of time I have to buy a cyberpunk. No, cyberpunk had a physical copy in it. I still never opened it, but I didn't want to wait for my special edition for that one. So I just mm-hmm. bought it digital. So I got double fucked by CD project red when that game oh, wow. came out. I bought two copies of that game. Oh, wow. Yeah. I kept them both. I never refunded either one. Nice. I was so excited for that game. Um, yeah, I'm a fucking whore for Cyberpunk. <laughs> so yeah, Cyberpunk is such a cool game. I man. love that game so much. I've put so many hours in that. I remember game. being like broken super, and unbroken. Yeah, I, I remember being super young and seeing the announcement trailer for that. That was so cool. Back like when Battle uh, Battlefield Three was like still yeah. popular. Dude. That's how long it. That's how long it was. Yeah. Did you see what Battlefield's doing? No, I've not. The oh, Dead Space the Dead mode Space thing. Yeah. Okay, I'm not re-downloading it. But it looked cool enough to almost make me re-download Battlefield yeah, 2042. Sure uh, Was it 2042? Yeah. I'm sure it's a $20 skin bundle or whatever. No, it it's free. And, it's oh, free. It's yeah, free. it's a free. It's a, just a new free mode. Oh, that's cool. It is I really just, cool. I saw the skins on it. And I'm like, mm-hmm. man, they're going to charge me to be... Probably bad. like to play as Isaac or anything, but to, like, yeah. to actually play that zombie mode, I was like, that's that's actually kind of like cool. cool. Like, yeah. I, I, you know what, EA? You almost got me. You almost yeah. got me. If I play it again, it'll be on the... I'm pretty sure it's free on Game Pass if you own it. Right? It is, yeah. 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 Eh, I'm not for it. Anyways, man, let's jump into the reviewing segment. So let's start out with what you wanted to review, uh, which is the Diablo 2 remake, which came out two years ago, I think, at this point. I think so, yeah. Um, I love Diablo 2. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Diablo 4 is almost better, but I have nostalgia for yeah. the original the cow level, everything of this area. So tell me, did you ever play the original? What do you, what do you feel about the remake? Tell so, me about it. Um, when I first played Diablo 2, I was maybe like three or four, mm-hmm. and the neighbor, neighbor's like daughter was babysitting me yeah. for like easy cash or whatever, and I was over at their house, and their brother had a big old CRT computer sitting in the main living room with a big old desk, and he's like, you want to try out this game? And I remember looking at the images and it was like, man, this game is so cool. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just kind of clicking. And he's just yeah. egging me on, right? And I that I was always like a core memory for me until like years later, I learned that it was Diablo 2. I think I learned it was Diablo 2 after like playing Diablo 3 for like hundreds of hours. Mm-hmm. And so that was the only like exposure that I got. Okay. And... Um, over this weekend, Dalton and I, we decided to just like play something new cause I'm tired of him playing League of legends and I'm tired of being mad at my games. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, we're going to buy Diablo two and we're going to play it. And it's been an awesome time. I, I don't know anything about the meta and Diablo two. I just picked a, what is it? Uh, the spear lady, the Amazon, the Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like level 12. What's he? He is a barbarian. We're okay. both like level 12. We're still in the first act. I'm like, man, this is actually kind of cool. They have the paladin in there, right? Yeah. I re- the paladin's cool. Yeah, the I paladin. really like the paladin and uh, the druid. Say, uh, but I use the necro. I've always, if I have a necro to play as, I'm going to play as them. Yeah. There's like the assassin, the barbarian, barbarian, sorceress. Nice. So it was a lot of fun. I What I really liked about that game is that like a lot of the items, it seems. Like, getting a blue item isn't just, like, oh, it's a blue item. No, it couldn't really help. You could get, like, even up to, like, eight affixes on it or, like, Mm -hmm. stat specials, and then you could even socket it, too. And I'm like, wow, that's super cool. Just to be able to pick up anything and have it have, like, random, truly random stats on it, it makes it, like, a really cool experience because now everything's kind of, you pick it up and Mm -hmm. you get to use it. I, I love Diablo 2. Um, it's one of my favorite video games of all time. Uh, it's a core memory with my dad. Uh, I remember playing 1 a little bit with him, but not a lot. 2 was like everything. And back so, in the day, if you played 2 and you didn't play for a certain amount of time, it, it expired your character. Oh, wow. So you were always having, like if you stopped playing for 100 days, like you would have to just restart a new, a new one. 
and I always had a blast with it. Um, my dad's old friend was super into Diablo 2 as well, and he would give us all this great fucking loot and show us the cow level and oh, all that's this so stuff. Cool. Um, you know, what's uh, funny is that I decided like randomly a few months ago that I'm like, okay, I don't want to play Diablo 4. I want to. I spent like 10 bucks and I bought Diablo 1. Uh huh. And um, they need to remaster that. Yeah, it would be cool because <laughs> I tried playing it and. I'm not, I'm not kidding you. Literally the second level that I got into, you know how they do like the mm-hmm. floors and everything. Mm-hmm. The second level I got into, I got the butcher and yep. I haven't been able to play it. Since. Yeah, it is really tough. I, the core memory of the first one, the, the only thing I really remember is the butcher. Mm-hmm. And the reason I say that is because when he sp- came in, my dad said, let him chase you. And they just sat from behind hitting him while I ran in a circle for my dear old life. <laughs> uh, and then Diablo 2, again, I just, I remember so much about it vividly, like just mm-hmm. how cool it was. And I think when it comes down to that game, because I, I made Curtis buy it when the remaster came out, because he was really into 3, and he's like, oh, I'll play 2. He thought 2 was a little too slow because oh, really? of how faster um, you move in 3 and 2. Yeah. I mean, as a remake, I know there was a lot of issues day one with the servers and stuff. Thank God I did not take the day off for that. I would have been so pissed off. Mm -hmm. But it really is the original game built up with better graphics, same gameplay. And as much as I love Diablo 4, because you can get so overpowered in that Mm -hmm. game, Diablo 2, I never felt like I was so overpowered that I could kill anything and get Mm -hmm. cocky. I always felt like I was still always on the brink of death most of the time in that game. Yeah. At least after the first act. I don't know how far you guys got. I, I'm i literally, I think, on the last quest. Is it crossplay? Is it crossplay? Is it crossplay? I, I don't know. know. Figure it out. I'll play with you guys. Oh, okay. I, I still have it downloaded. Yeah. So if it is, just let me know. I have a, I don't remember what level my Necromancer is. But uh, there, that game, I still think, has the coolest areas. There is one that is in, I think, the end of Act 3, going to Act 4. Oh, wow. That is incredible and then the whole dlc area the epilogue Mm -hmm. masterpiece dude that area is still like top tier anything for rpg the uh, i think it's called the monastery barracks it's the that's in the first one right yeah the first act okay it's the giant barracks and just keeps on going and going and you could go yeah did you fight the tall lady with the the and Dario is her name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, we haven't fought her. But yet. isn't that cool how they brought her back for four? Yeah. And then there's a couple other bosses you'll see that came back. Yeah, from, for it, it's four. really cool. I definitely know that like Mephisto's in there, mm-hmm. and Diablo, of course. But yeah, it's a uh, it's definitely a change of pace. I think my favorite thing is is just the the difference of what loot is compared mm-hmm. to like Diablo four. So like yeah. I have. I think close to three days playtime on my okay. rogue on Diablo Four. I've gone. I pretty much hit like tier one fourteen yeah. of the pit, and I've farmed all like the Uber bosses. Mm-hmm. Got an Uber unique. I've done it all, and it's uh, it's cool yeah. to see like the legendaries. But like in Diablo Two, like I said, it's I think it's really cool that you could just pick up a a spear and it could have like six different yeah. stats on it. I'm like, wow, that's so awesome. When I mentioned the cow level, do you know what that is? I actually don't know what that is. I know what it were is you confused when 3? I kept saying the Kala? Oh, with the unicorns and shit. Yeah. Okay. Can I tell you what it is? I, is it just like a secret level? It's a secret level for after you beat the game. Mm-hmm. I don't don't I, I can't tell you what items it was. I totally forgot. But you put these items together, mm-hmm. and it creates. And then when you use the item, it creates a portal, and you oh, go okay. into it, and it's a bunch of fucking talking cows with axes and swords, and they go moo. Moo, 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 moo. <laughs> and they do a fuck ton of damage. Oh. Now, I don't know if the remaster had this, but back in the day, if you played that level and you killed the king cow, you can never go back there on that. On You can never craft the item again. Oh, okay. So me and my dad used to, we used to join people's games. 
go do the there. level, kill the cow in their level, and then leave. Wow, because then we could, are we are assholes. assholes. Yeah, wow. dude. So I love it. Uh, yeah. If right now, I know you're still early on. Uh, what would you give Diablo two? I'd love to revisit this conversation though and talk about mm-hmm. it once you finally beat it. Maybe do a little bit of a ranking for all the Diablos. I know the first oh, one's yeah. a little bit tougher, but yeah. What would you? So I would far have to room? figure out how to kill the butcher in the first one yeah. if I want to beat it. <laughs> well, just let me know. Like, what would you rate it out of ten right oh, now? Oh, dude, it's a, it's an easy eight right now. I, eight. Okay. Yeah. I really think it's a strong game. I'm I'm just a for how for old it is too. Yeah. yeah, it's a really strong game, and I I like the characters mm-hmm. and um, just it's so simple. It feels yeah. so simple, but it could be complex if you want it to be. I and love that. Unlike in Diablo Four, I felt like I needed a PhD to understand like a lot what of gives things. Me. Yeah, because like uh, I didn't tell you this, but I just met a random dude online who gave you never know you know that ends always well he happened to have like the same kind of build that i was doing i'm doing like a rogue yeah yeah. rapid fire chill build or whatever and i literally asked him i'm like what am i missing out and he gave me like a two-hour lesson and helped me redo my entire paragon (laughs) that's cool and tell me the math behind everything and like what's multiplicative and bro active. that's like i'm like this dude has a fucking phd i asked him i'm like do you teach for a living and what do you say like, yeah I yeah do. i'm like okay that makes sense that makes a lot of sense so, shout out to shout, that guy yeah seriously do you have shout a name out to for that him guy. do you have a name um dude i call him the messiah He's okay the, yeah. the messiah yeah. shout out to the messiah well phil with that said um i'm gonna jump in and start talking about the bear season three the Bear Season 3 is a lot of things that I was very, very excited for. Uh, season 1 was awesome. Season 2 came out, and it was superb. Some of the best television of this decade so far. And now with Season 3 of The Bear, now all out, you can go and binge it. Last time we talked on this podcast, I had only seen three or four episodes, and I was curious to see how I was going to feel on it because a lot of people had said it was the worst season yet. I disagree. I think it is the eh, second best you know, I think all the seasons are good. I don't really get the hate on this season. I think this is a really good in-between setup season for what will probably be the fourth or the fourth and final season. I think that's exactly what's going to happen is the fourth season will be the final season. Even by the end of this one where it says to be continued, it's never said that. It feels that, okay, this was just set up for every yeah. single character, laying them out. And every time I watch a show like this, I always think it's like a game of chess whether it's Game of Thrones, House of Dragons, Breaking Bad, it's always a game of chess where you're moving your characters to have the best outcome at the end or maybe the worst outcome, but to get to the where you want the characters to be. Mm-hmm. And I found that the bear was just superb from top to bottom. Like, for instance, the cast in here, incredible, Phil. Like, I absolutely love uh, Jeremy Allen White, Eben Moss, Bacharach, Bacharach who's actually going to be playing The Thing in Fantastic Four, so that's going to oh, be great okay. to see. Uh, A.O. Edebry, uh, Lionel Boyce, uh, Liza Zayas, Abby Elliott, Matthew Mathadison, um, the list goes on and on from there. But the thing that I really want to focus in on is the first, is two episodes primarily for this. Because episode six, which is directed by A.O. Edebry, who I love, she's so incredible in everything. Now she can add to her docket that she is an incredible director. And this episode focuses in on Tina the older lady of the kitchen of everyone else and seeing her backstory. And that episode made me emotional. It made me love the character more. And it had one cameo in it that really just brought everything to life with this character. And that's what I've loved about the bear is how some episodes, they don't care about showing anyone else. Sometimes they'll just take its time to show what is going on with that one character. And that's what this one did. And now I have such a more respect for this character and love for them. And the whole last 10, 15 minutes of the episode is some of my favorite that I've seen in this entire series as a whole. Alongside that, there's another episode with Abby Elliott and Jamie Lee Curtis. And to not get into spoilers on it, this whole episode really focuses in on birth. Mm Mm-hmm. And she doesn't have the greatest relationship with her mother, who, again, is played by Jamie Lee Curtis. But to see where she went in that episode just, again, gave me all these feelings, gave me all this emotion, and I absolutely loved it. I can say that issues with this season, 
it's a little slow. It's a little mm-hmm. slower. I've seen some complaints where people are like, well, a lot of these characters don't really have you know, the essence, the movement of their character arcs. And that's why I say this is a really good setup season. Mm-hmm. Because we're setting up where these characters are going to go eventually. And I think this is the season that we really needed that to be in. So overall, if I were to give the Bear Season 3 a grade, I'd give it a B plus, um, an A, 8.5 out of 10 if you want to grade it on that. I think, again, it is the second best season of the series so far. But there's no really worse season because they're all just good. Yeah. You haven't watched the show. Do you, have you heard anything about it or are you excited know, it's about, about it? A, it's about a chef and it's like restaurant. Okay. That's really all I know about. You should watch it. You should absolutely watch I it. I heard there's some really good writing and like incredible what, writing. Yeah. What the characters talk about can be mm-hmm. on a very deep level, which is cool. Yeah, I agree. So everybody go check out the Bear Season Three. Go have fun with it. It's on Hulu right now. Ooh. All right, Phil. Let's jump into Despicable Me Four. Oh, really? Uh, have you? Are you a fan of this franchise? Do you like the Minions? <laughs> have you ever seen one of these? A Despicable Me movie? Yeah. No, just from what I do. Are you art. fucking kidding me? Yeah. You've never seen a Minions movie. Mm-mm. Despicable Me. No. Do you know what they are? I mean, I know that they're like little Minions. Dude, that- I legitimately think you might be the only person in the fucking world that's never seen one of these. No, not in like its full entirety. But you, I'm my mind's fucking blown. Anyways, the fourth movie sucks. <laughs> just, just, I feel like after maybe maybe like the first two were probably good, and then I'm sure they were just kind of like keep making them. Well, they make a lot them. of money. Yeah. Um, the first one's great. The second one, I I am in the unpopular opinion. I think it's a little bit better than the first one, but I I, I still really like it. Then they spun it off, and they're like, we're gonna make the little yellow fucks their own franchise. Let's say where they came from. Okay. That movie sucks so much. So there's already four movies. So that's three guys. right now. Then you get to then they went and did Despicable Me Three. Okay. Which is the most forgettable thing I've ever seen. So I can't really even tell you what's in there. Then you got five, which came out two years ago, and it was is that the Minions: Rise of, Gru? Rise of Gru. Okay. Which I really liked. That was actually a lot of fun. What was the problem with Minions? They're missing Gru. What was the problem with some of those future Despicable Me movies? Gru is not evil anymore or doing evil things. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's go back, set it down, show when they first met, and do their first heist. Awesome. Now we get to Despicable Me 4, which I was not excited for, but hopeful. You know, because the last min- the last Minions was awesome. I was like, okay, we're back on board. Let's do this. No. No. You know those, like, ch- you remember when Nickelodeon would release, like, the Jimmy Neutron movie, and then like a year later have a show. You know what I'm talking about? The I'm trying to think of the Jimmy Neutron. You movie. don't know what Jimmy Neutron is? Well, I know what Jimmy Neutron is. <laughs> but do you remember how there was a movie with like the yellow goo, guy, the green goo guys and stuff yeah. like that? Yeah, yeah, and then they made a show about it. Or they made a show that was like a sequel after it. Really? Oh, is that Dude, that's where like Sheen? all... No, no. They've made a show. That's where like half the memes come from. They're well, not from the movie. The Jim- well, I know the Jimmy Neutron show. I've watched that. Yeah, there's a movie. Oh, are you saying that the movie came out before the show? Yes. Oh, I did not know that. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah, so, so it came out beforehand, and it's very interesting. So, like, Despicable Me 4 feels like they ha- they were going to make a show for Despicable Me, and they had all these subplots, but then they didn't end up doing the show. They just put them all in one movie. Mm-hmm. And it's it's not great. Like they have the minions get superpowers at one point. It, nothing. Uh, I, I'm just like baffled by their choice. Um, I can't believe you've. I still cannot believe you've never seen a single Despicable Me movie. No. I'm like shook, shooketh, shooketh. No, I just kind of was like, I felt like I was too old when the first one came out. I'm like, okay, you're never too old to see animated movies. Yeah, well, it's not like that, but like. I felt like I would be able to watch like Inside Out compared to like... You should watch the first one at least. The first one's good. The watched, first one's still good. I watched Inside Out. No, 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 no. I mean Despicable Me. Me. Yeah. That's her. Yeah. Did you see the second one, Inside Out yet? No, I have not. That's actually it. on my watch list. Okay, good. All right. Well, jumping in next, uh, we have Maxine. Do you know what Maxine is? I've watched... Um, you saw X, didn't you? Yeah, I saw X. You see Pearl? 
No. It's okay if you didn't. So Maxine is the trilogy ending capper to all this. Takes place about five, six years after X. Okay. I was going to say, because I know that Pearl was a prequel. prequel. Yeah. So Pearl is came out second, <clears throat> but it is takes place before all of it, and it is about the old lady and where okay. she came from. X was X, and then Maxine is now six years later. Where did Maxine go? Um, I thought this was really good. But I've kind of came to the conclusion that every single one of these movies, I just walk out, I'm like, that was good. That was good. I enjoyed that. But they're movies that I more appreciate what they're trying to do with the subgenre. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you've ever felt that while like watching or reviewing something or even like um, playing like a video game, like where you can like be like, this is good all on paper. This is like a good game. This is a good show. This is a good movie. Just not my cup of tea. I appreciate what they're trying to do, but yeah. I just can't get into it. Yeah, that's fair. Is there anything like for you that oh, p- sticks out that's kind of like that? Um, what is it? Noah got me this game, and I'm like, I can't do it because it stresses me out. Yeah, it's uh, Overcooked. Oh yeah, yeah. Played. I haven't it's played it. It's such a cute no. game. It's a game that shouldn't stress you out. You play it with your partner, mm-hmm. partner, and it's a great time. But I think it's just because like I worked in the food industry. So when I yeah you get it yeah I'm like when I'm on the clock and someone's telling me I have to make this recipe I'm like uh. <laughs> yeah hey man I get it um, but Maxine is kind of the same way I don't think it's the best of the trilogy I don't think it's the worst I think it's just straight flat out in the middle uh, I have a full review you can go check out for more details but um, overall I liked it I didn't love it. Last but not least, the last thing I want to review this week is Sing Sing. Uh, This movie is incredible. Um, Sing Sing is something I wasn't anticipating. Uh, A24 invited me to go to the Phoenix Film Festival to talk about the film and review it when it was finally coming out. It's finally coming out this week. But this is about uh, Divine G, who's in prison at Sing Sing for a crime he did not commit. But he finds purpose by acting in a theater group alongside other incarcerated men in the story of resilience, humanity, and the transformative power of art. Now, this is based on a true story. This is based about a real group of people who made this prison and this dramatic art. Like, the, you, you see all these, like, gang members acting out, like, playing time travelers or, like, Egyptian gods and... It's a movie that, like, as I'm watching, I'm like, this is really good. But it just kept getting better and better and better. It's kind of like a slow burn on you. A little slow burn, but I never looked back and been like, oh, the film was too long. I think this is one of the best films of the year. Uh, Coleman Domingo, who should be the next King the Conqueror. I would fucking love. He's been in so many things. Do you ever watch Fear the Walking Dead at all or anything like that? No, I did not. Okay. He's one of those actors that you've definitely seen his face before. Yeah. But... For me, what he was able to do in this role is phenomenal. There's another actor by the name of Clarence McCallan, who I've never really seen anything before. And from my understanding, he's actually one of the original people from the Sing Sing, like the base on the true story. Oh. And he's great. Again, plays a gang member who joins this to kind of just get out of like doing the mundane things in prison. And you see how serious so many of these guys take the acting and that this is their way of escaping and kind of opening up their eyes. And when you get to actually see the play that they put on, it's it's so joyous. That's and really cool. it's a film about people being people. Yeah. And sometimes you kind of need those little bit of stories about humanity that kind of regain your hope in humanity in a way. Yeah. So I loved Sing Sing. I cannot recommend it enough. If you're looking for a smaller film, absolutely go check it out. I would give Sing Sing an A, uh, almost an A+. Plus. Um, can't wait to watch it again. But, Phil, that's our reviewing segment. It's oh, time okay. to jump into the big boy of this the San right. Diego Comic-Con, man. Um, this is the preview. What will Marvel bring? What will we be doing? Uh, we're kind of going to go through day by day. A- again, as of recording this, there really is no schedule yet. So we're just going to say Friday and Saturday are for Hall H and what we hope to see there, what isn't. But to stick off with Wednesday and Thursday, obviously Wednesday is preview night. Um, Mm -hmm. We're hopefully going to be doing some activations. FX is going to be having an activation, which was announced today. And I think they're bringing the Bear Restaurant there, which Mm -hmm. will be really cool to kind of check it out. You should definitely check out a couple episodes before... Before we go down there, yeah, just to kind of get right. a feel for I mean, it. You, you pretty much gave me all this stuff to mm-hmm. start watching anything now, so yeah, I gotta 
I got to get on it. Yeah. You put it on my PS5. See? See, so. there you go. So I, I'm excited. Um, What are you hoping, like, who are you hoping brings an activation this year? Like, obviously, like, this is going to get pretty dated pretty fast. We're just predicting and hoping to have fun. But what do you hope to see? Dude, I really want Amazon to bring Fallout. At least something. Yeah, they already that. had all that stuff. Fallout would be great. The Boys. The Boys. Would be awesome to have, like, a... The first year I ever went, they actually did have a Boys activation. Yeah, that'd be cool. You want to explain? No, no, no. It, they did. They did. And it, it, if you remind me, I'll show you the footage of people walking through it. Dude, they had people like blowing up walls and shit like that. It, oh, I didn't get to do it. That's because cool. I was like, I don't know what the fuck this is. I'm not going to go. Oh. Okay. And I didn't go and I was watching footage back. I'm like, I fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes that's the best activations. The one we did last year with the little uh, Chucky running around. It was yeah, really the cool. Chucky. And then we had a, they had a Street Fighter thing there too. Remember? Oh, yeah. Was it? No, it's it was, Tekken. It was Tekken. Yeah, that was, was cool. Yeah. yeah. Remember how we tried had... doing the Armored Core one? Oh, yeah. We couldn't get into the Armored Core one. Ooh. You know, I'm, you know what I'm hoping someone brings? Hmm. I'm hoping they bring Shadow of the Earth Tree. Continue oh. that buzz. That'd be fucking cool to see something from Elden Ring there. That would be cool. Yeah. Hey, I'm, I'm surprised how many, like, it felt like a hole in the wall kind of deal. Yeah. Where they were like, you didn't know about Armored Core unless yeah. you were looking at it. Yeah, that and is, then Blizzard really had cool. one too inside the pan inside yeah. the convention hall, which was yeah. cool. I, the Blizzard one was more like they're not going this year. Oh, really? I heard. Yeah, they're not on the map, so it's kind of weird. It's kind of surprising. It is, but again, like, do you hope like Hulu does another one for animation I think, or? I think Hulu would be cool to see again. Um, mm-hmm. Fox, they, it seems like they're a pretty consistent audience. Yeah. Um, trying to think who else would be there i want amazon to bring lord of the rings i think a lord of the rings one would be sick well, and they're gonna be doing another lord show. of the ring yeah they'll have a panel there we'll talk about that yeah. um i think it's friday is when mm-hmm. they're doing it but uh i thought the panel they did there was great uh, i know not a lot of people love the show i i liked it for the most part enough to make me want to watch a season two mm-hmm. but uh yeah dude i'm i'm very interested to see with what they bring there um Anything else you'd like to see? I Honestly, I'd like a big studio like a Marvel Studios to bring. It'd be cool to have a Deadpool and Wolverine fucking uh, yeah, well, thing there. Yeah, I was going to say there's there's so many great releases coming out that I feel like there should be something to just kind of build mm-hmm. up the hype. Sometimes they like to bring horror. It would be cool if they had something for Alien Romulus as well, oh, like yeah. one of the first few days too. I'm trying to think if there was any like small shows or small right like last year they had severance like an activation for oh severance. we didn't get to do it either yeah we didn't get to do that it's funny that you say severance is small because i remember they sent me this big box in the mail i'm like what is this show and i watched the first episode and i wasn't like really hooked so i didn't finish it but i heard it just gets incredible mm-hmm. and then everyone's going to this activation i'm like Man, I think we fucked up. We probably should have gone. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm hoping to do more of this year. I hope that studios still do bring activations. At Paramount, yeah. same thing. Paramount always has a rockin' one. Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, maybe. When they, we did that uh, undertow thing. Yeah, that was cool. I forgot we did that with the bar and then the yeah. dragon showing up. That yeah. would be sick. Haunted Mansion had one. Remember? Haunted Disney Mansion. did do one. I forgot yeah. they did do that one. That one was a far ass walk. Yeah, it was. Who are you hoping has a party? You hoping the Neopets have a party again? Dude, I, Neopets? Bro, I low don't key, know. You think I hope remember? so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I still get emails from the person. She still runs the Neopets that's stuff. That's funny. They're going to have stuffed animals this year. I might oh, buy one. I might cute. buy one at their booth. Dude, I just remember Neopets, man, being little and... I played the shit out of it. Yeah. That's crazy. Nah. I hope they make we, the So we went to this Neopets party, and I'm going to tell you, like, we, we thought it was going to be weird and dumb, and we went, and it was so awesome. Uh, the food was good. The drinks were really good. The oh, drinks were really, really good. Especially at those kind of parties. Usually they they just kind of play it safe. And, and they water generic. it down. Yeah. yeah, it's very generic or they water it down. But it was a cool location. They were announcing the Neopets were coming we were back. The top floor. It was like a penthouse. Kind yeah, of it was thing. a penthouse. Yeah. I thought we were going to get murdered. Yeah. Like the way we had to like come in and everything like that. So um, I'm excited. So yeah, obviously Wednesday and Thursday we'll be, we're going to attempt to do activations. Hopefully there's a lot more. Um, do you know what a lot of people have been seeing though? Because they're starting to put up decorations and stuff. Is mm-hmm. they've had Fantastic Four banners everywhere. Oh wow! Like just uh, concept art and stuff. Mm-hmm. So that's where we get into Friday. So no one knows when Marvel's gonna be there yet. I'm assuming they'll be there Saturday. Um, I think Friday will be, from my understanding, Lord of the Rings. Are we gonna try and do the Hall H panel? What are you thinking? I mean, I feel like we just gotta. I think since- it. De- 
I feel like it depends on what I what how Wednesday and Thursday go. Yeah. Personally, for me, because I still like walking the floor and seeing other people and like seeing cosplay and like seeing what booths there are. Mm. Um, they do a pretty good job, at least pairing some big events with something really cool. It's smaller um, stuff too. Yeah. The, the, that's kind of one of the things is when we got to sit through there through the whole day. It's really cool to see like what else other studios bring. Yeah, I was gonna say um, last was it last year that we got to see the um, the call it Ka- uh, Kali eighty twenty fifty nine or something the sci fi film right? Yeah, the sci fi which film, just which came is... out like last weekend. Oh, did it really? Yeah, yeah. I did saw someone. I saw one of my it? friends review. I I know people who've seen it. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say we should watch that. I'm down. That's I think some, it's, I don't know really if it's still in theaters it though. I remember they got all the, they did like a whole like, Dude, video they went segment all out on, on like that. all the, um, remember how many times they played the trailer? Actors. Yeah. They played it twice yeah. or they played it like three times or something mm-hmm. like that. And they're like, hype it up. And yeah. I'm like, man, this is, I love this. Yeah. It was really cool. And I really dug that one overall. Um, I really, <laughs> Uh, what was the one I really liked? Uh, I liked the Keanu Reeves comic one, the Berserk one, the comic. Oh, I went yes. and bought all the comics like immediately after. That's right. We did do that. So, we um, and the yeah. Comics. And then it's crazy because sometimes you go to them and like the House of the Dragons, the one I was so excited for. And it was absolute garbage, except for the guy mm-hmm. who asked uh, Matt Smith that question. Oh. It's Morbin oh. time. You guys can probably That's... find the footage. There was a man who literally went up there and said, are you ready for it's Morbin time? The audience understood. Matt Smith, not so much. Yeah. And if you're listening to this and you don't know what it's about, Morbius, biggest meme movie of that year. Yeah. Um. Oh, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles had one last year. That was cool. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Did you end up Walking seeing that? Dead. I can't remember if we talked about that. Did you end up seeing Ninja Turtles? No, I did not. Oh, I my God. It's one of those things Dude, on the watch list. It is. I, I've probably watched that movie seven times. Mm-hmm. Like anytime I'm just like riding the bike at home, like working out, I, I put feel it like on. It's a really good coming of age story. It's incredible. You should absolutely watch it. I'm gonna start. Um, what did I sign you to do last week? I can't remember. Oh, I signed you to watch something. Did I? Oh, the acolyte. That's right. Did you watch it? No, I did not. I have to do it. We're gonna start giving you homework at this point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Every every time we do a podcast, I think we said this. I'm gonna give you homework. Yeah. You either have to watch the Acolyte or Ninja Turtles. I have to watch. Okay, I'll do the Ninja Turtles. Okay, it's short. Which, which one is that on? Uh, it's on Paramount. Paramount. Yeah. You got me on Paramount, right? I think. I, I should. If yeah. not, just remind me. Yeah. That's so, fair. but yeah, watch that one. Um, because that's something. You also gotta watch the Rick Grimes show, dude. I know. If The Walking Dead goes this year, it's it's hard, man. It's hard for me to watch all I, that. I know. I love I it. Know. I, I know that, that show was incredible, though. Yeah, that's one of my favorite shows. I definitely. That's need another to thing. It. You think The Walking Dead comes? Jared Dixon's getting a season two this year. Uh, mm. The Maggie and Negan show is getting a season two next year. So yeah, I'm I'm thinking that I think Walking Dead's going to be. Do there we get an activation. Year. I think they will. They I mean, did they had it every year, haven't they? Not last year. I don't. They, yes, they did. Did they? Yeah, they had that big old thing that you walked up the steps and they had like... Was that last year? I thought it was the year prior. Mm. I think it was the year prior. I don't think they did it last year. I felt like they would have because they had... I can't remember for the life of me. They announced... Dude, I cannot remember the life for me. Yeah. All the years blend together. But I did one the first year I went and it was really cool. It was like a whole field and stuff. But I'm going to be honest, I didn't really pay attention because... uh, it turned out Tom Cruise was at Comic Con for Top Gun oh. Maverick, so then everyone was just talking about that in Terminator. Yeah. Um, so yeah, dude. But now let's get into the big boy Saturday. Marvel's gonna be there, but someone else is gonna be there too. I don't. This isn't officially announced, but I've heard that DC is going. Oh, okay. Not James Gunn. Really? So apparently, we're getting two panels. Okay. One. Creature Commando, which is that new animated uh, show to kick off that new universe. Looks awesome. I'm down for it. The second one's the one I'm more excited for. What is that? I'm going to kill you if you hadn't seen this movie. No. You don't even know what I was going to say. I was taking (laughs) a deep, dramatic pause, Phil. The Batman Part 2. Oh, yeah. With Robert Pattinson. So I've heard, because Penguin's getting, um, Penguin comes out in september the show oh, that takes place show. afterwards you know, yeah i forgot about that i heard that people really liked penguin in that film though did you see the movie yeah okay I'm he's awesome yeah that. yeah he's awesome i'm excited for the show to see like them show what happened afterwards with penguin mm-hmm. 
But yeah, I, I this is uh, for people who don't know the first Batman, well, not the first Batman, but the first Batman with Robert Pattinson was my most anticipated movie of all time. Mm-hmm. And I watched that movie, and now it is one of my favorite comic book movies of all time. I love that movie so much. I've been waiting, clamoring for any news on another Batman film. And apparently there's going to be cast announcements there. Again, this is all rumors, but I hope they go. Yeah. I think it would be so great. I also will tell you this. I think they premiere the first episode of The Penguin there oh. in Hall H. Uh, that would be cool. They haven't done a big thing like that since 2019 i think not just warner brothers but like a studio mm-hmm. um so i think this would be such a great experience but it's going to be very unique but now let's jump into marvel so marvel's going to be the big talk everybody's going to go to going to go to the marvel thing there's so many things happening with marvel but there's also a lot of unique things and the reason i say that is because marvel also has d23 which is the big disney convention in a couple weeks after that so the best way to kind of split this up is i think marvel is mostly going to focus on comic-con for the movies. I think they're going to focus on all the movie stuff there. Anything Disney Plus related, I think will end up going to um, D23. I think it just feels more that's the thing that they want people to buy into and stuff. The only thing I think we will see there is Daredevil. I think Daredevil is like the guarantee we're yeah. getting a trailer. What yeah. do you, so we're just going to go back and forth, maybe not a specific order. What's one thing you want to see at Marvel first? I definitely want to see uh, Daredevil. Daredevil? Uh, yeah. I love the Netflix show. Mm-hmm. It was really good. It was incredible. Yeah. We just need so a trailer. Awesome. We just need a trailer. I and just want something to just concrete the fact that it's... Okay. It's real. It's, yeah. And it's good, hopefully. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm <laughs> Have you heard about too. the drama on that show? I heard that it got like rewritten or something, right? Yeah. Basically, during the strikes, they edited the first three episodes for, and they looked at it, and they're like, this is ass. Oh, wow. And they re... They got they kept some of the footage, but they rewrote a lot of it and basically said this is Daredevil season four now. Uh, Bullseye's back, Punisher's back, Karen's back, Foggy's back. Oh, that's everyone's cool. back basically. That's awesome. Where the I original like show it was just Kingpin and Daredevil in it, and I think Punisher was still going to show up. Yeah, but that was it. So now we're getting everybody back. Yeah, I'm and it's just, not uh, twenty two episodes. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say I'm just glad that they. Um, decided to just keep Charlie Cox. Yeah. As, we were there together when they yeah. announced that they were doing this show, weren't they? Yeah. Yeah. They were, that they're just going to keep him as Daredevil. And now he's pla- like actually planted into the MCU. MCU. Especially and with that, She-Hulk. Like he is officially there. Yeah. Like, And now Punisher is going to be a part of that too, which mm-hmm. is really cool. I love John Berthold. Same. He, he's such he a great does pick. A really good job. Awesome. So Daredevil is one of your picks. For me... Yeah. Um, Fantastic Four is the obvious one. We know they're going to be there. There's already art everywhere, so I'll just mm. get that one out of the way. It's the obvious one. I think, because uh, Kevin Feige talked about this, they start filming that movie the day after Comic-Con. I think they're going, I think they'll be the first thing that comes out. I think they're going to come out on stage, talk about Fantastic Four, and I think they're all going to be in the suits. Mm. I think Pedro, Vanessa, Eben, and um, Joseph will all be in their Fantastic Four suits. Obviously, the thing is going to be CGI, but I think they'll just give him one of the onesies with the four on it. Yeah. And I think that that'll be such a cool thing. And I'm going to throw a pitch out. I think Doctor Doom gets uh, confirmed for the film, and I think we find out the actor there. Oh, that'd be cool. What do you do? You agree? Are you excited I, for that? Yeah, I think Doctor Doom's always a good villain mm-hmm. for them. It's what about solid. the rest of the cast? Are you excited for that? Yeah, I think Pedro Pascal is going to do a really good job. I so, love that. Speaking yeah. of Pedro, real fast, I really hope they bring The Last of Us to to Comic Con. Oh yeah, Season like two. it's almost done. Just bring some I of the see a cast. Lot of the photos they show a lot of the photos. Behind Today the it came out. You see her tattoo. Set. You see her tattoo. Oh, that's so. so cool. Um, you know what I was thinking about as you were talking about this? You know, it'd be a really cool announcement or just hmm. at least showing. I remembered that at least video game wise, I would love to see a little bit of the Wolverine game. Oh, that is true. And if they were to do, it won't be at this panel, but it would be cool to see Insomniac come back because they just did the Spider Man one. Mm-hmm. And then they did do a trailer for it, not for the show um, or the movie, but they did have a Blade video game announced. Oh, yeah, they, they did. Had a trailer for it. From the Dishonored crew. So yeah. that, that'll be cool. I'm interested to see. So I, I would hope to see something there because mm-hmm. obviously I'm a big fan of video games. Yeah. So I would love to yeah. just eat anything. I love that. that. Do you have another movie you want to state or you want me to go next? Mm, Marvel, 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 Marvel. I'll go, I'll go next for now. Yeah. Uh, Blade. I think we will see 
Maharsha Mar Mar Har Jesus Christ Maharsha wow. I cannot say, Maharsha I can I usually can say that name pretty well uh, Ali I'll just say that because I cannot yeah. figure out how to say the name right now off the top of my head it's been a long day uh, I think he comes back obviously we were there when it, no you weren't there that was the year you didn't get to go that was the first year I went when they announced him he walked out it was like the biggest crowd pleasing thing oh that's so cool. I think this year they bring back him. I think they announce a director. I think they announce that they know what they're doing with this. Mm -hmm. And I think we get a Midnight Suns announcement. I think they're going to film Blade and Midnight Suns back to back. For people who don't know, Midnight Suns is the horror Avengers. Blade, a Moon Knight, a Ghost Rider, uh, the Werewolf by Night, all the Man Thing, uh, Elsa Bloodstone, like all of those horror creatures. And I think we get that announcement that we are officially getting that movie. That'd be cool. And I think th they're going to talk about all the production and stuff like that. Something you asked me before we got into this was, do I think Thunderbolts is going to show up there? Yes. I was going to say, do you think, um, obviously, with everything that like happened with the strikes and just like the general receiving of like Marvel films and like Marvel media, they had when we went two years ago, they had that whole world planner of like what's coming out. Oh, the the map. The we're getting a new one. saga. Yeah, we're think? getting a new one. Yeah. I think I think they're gonna I think they're gonna come out and address. Like we know people have not really loved what we've been putting out, which has been for a lot of different reasons. Some of it's Disney, the old CEO hovering over their chest saying, "You got to give me this Disney Plus stuff right now." Mm -hmm. And then you have this other stuff where it's like, okay, now they have Bob Iger's back. He's letting them do their shit. I've heard Deadpool and Wolverine's awesome. We're seeing it Thursday night there. Mm -hmm. uh, IMAX, San Diego, come, that's going to be fucking cool. Yeah. To I have that wait. crowd experience. Yeah, the crowd is going to be yeah. super good. I, I know what I'm seeing, and I am seeing it beforehand, but I'm going to close my mouth. <sighs> I can't I, believe you. <laughs> sorry, man. I got I to gotta review shit. I know. But I'm more excited to see it with you. Mm -hmm. Spoilers, because we're going to do a spoiler review, guys. But I'm more excited to see it with you, San Diego, Comic-Con, and IMAX with all those fans. You think Not we'll see, with critics. You think you will see someone there? I think Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman might show up. That was the next thing I was going to tell you. I think they're going to be at the panel. I, I think hope so. I wouldn't be shocked if they come out and they're... He, okay, this is my... I know we keep jumping around a little bit. Um, I'm going to say this because I'm going to fucking forget. I think the panel ends... With Avengers 5 officially being announced. Well, it's already been announced, but you know what I mean. Actual mm -hmm. title, not Kang Dynasty or whatever. It's going to be an actual title. I think we get that in Secret Wars. But I think they come out, they say who's the director is, and they see Deadpool and Wolverine are in the movie. And I think they walk them out and say that. What do you think? I think that'd be pretty good. Yeah. Hmm. And I think that's that's the big thing there. Oh. So, but uh, also Thunderbolts, you asked me about that. I think they're going to be there. If you're asking me what we're going to get exclusively, I think Thunderbolts, they're going to show the trailer to us and that'll be it. They won't release it online or anything yeah. like that. Captain America will probably be there, but the date this episode's coming out, there's rumors that it actually might be coming. The trailer might be coming this week, oh, okay. which is kind of interesting to me. I thought they would just hold it till Comic-Con two weeks. Yeah, so. Maybe they're just trying to build up some hype for it. Maybe. Uh, Marvel panel. But yeah, I mean, that that could be a big thing. Anything else you're hoping to see there? Any Spider-Man news? Any, like, do you want to know when the next Tom Holland Spider-Man is? Oh, you or? know what? Uh, oh, at least Marvel-wise? Yeah. Mm, yeah, I think a new Spider-Man, that would be cool to be like, oh, Andrew Garfield's coming back for another film. Oh, like so, Secret Wars yeah, or something? Yeah. I mean, that would be cool, but I just want to see really good Marvel films again and just... Me come too. back and just be excited for yeah. them again. And that's actually a topic I really want to do after we come back from Deadpool and Wolverine. Um, and I, I don't think I brought it up with you, but we'll talk about it. I want to do a topic about this is if Deadpool and Wolverine's awesome. And mm -hmm. the critical consensus with everybody is this movie's so good. I'd like to do a topic of what does Marvel need to do to like, what should Marvel do to keep being good? Mm -hmm. I think what do you think? Um, this is just probably my field coming out and yeah. like what I do for work. But I think when you like withhold a lot of these things and you allow people to not be oversaturated with it and just like, um, 
when you withheld something that you hold dearly, mm-hmm. you, you get more desire to have it, right? So I really just, I think for them to be good again, they just need to take their time. Which is what they're doing, it seems, right? So, like Deadpool and Wolverine is the only Marvel, only MCU Marvel movie coming out this year. They can't control Madam Web or Craven the Hunter or Venom. Yeah. But specifically for them, it's this. Um, out of the shot of the dark, is there anything else big that you'd like to see announced at Marvel, though? I mean, I would like to see something from Craven. Now that you've mentioned, I don't it. think Craven goes there. You don't think Sony's going to do something at least? Uh, Sony would have to do it separately, and I don't think they will. Yeah, um, maybe because of Horizon not being there either. Horizon. Uh, uh, I thought they were going to do a Horizon show, and then it got canned, didn't it? Uh, Netflix, yeah. Yeah, but I was going to say like that's still another Sony thing that they could have. Like, yeah, maybe. Yeah, like I could see that. Uh, Madam Web sucked, so yeah. I mean that's that's another whole thing. So I don't know, guys. Let us know what you think Marvel will be bringing to the panels at San Diego Comic Con. Fingers crossed. Me and Phil get in. If not, I'll be doing a live stream on those reactions. I actually want to ask you a quick question yes. unrelated to Marvel. Of course. Marvel. One thing that we didn't discuss is do you think Amazon's going to show anything Warhammer with Henry Cavill? Ooh. Um, didn't think about that. I think there's a chance he could go and they talk about their plans. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it would just be cool to have a cool Warhammer panel. I will tell you, I think it'd be dope as shit if they did a Space Marine like uh, like the, for the video game. But then immediately after, you have Henry Cavill come out. Oh, that'd be cool. I think it would just be cool to see the plans for their f- franchises. You yeah. know, the games, if they do comics, books, anything like that. That yeah. would be something I would... And then, of course, you end it with Henry coming out on yeah. stage. Maybe in one I of the I would love suits. to see, like, Games Workshop actually have a much more uh, bigger footprint as yeah. far as her panel. It's just hard with them because it seems from... I'm not very into, like games workshop yeah. and how they do things or what's really coming out for that kind of media. But it just seems like there's always something coming from them and they like they don't mind spreading out the Warhammer IPs mm-hmm. to like whoever to make yeah. whatever. So Well and that's what I want to see from more Comic Con panels in general is not just the Marvel, the D C, the whatever. I want to see Things like that, where Warhammer is being shown off. Or, like, again, where we got to see, like, that Khalid AD. Like, those are cool things. Mm -hmm. Show other things in Hall H, like, other than that. That's why, like, it's funny to me, like, Invincible wasn't in Hall H last year, but they had a small little panel for it in another room. Why? Why? The Invincible should go to Hall H. I'd be giving all these bigger shows and all these other bigger IPs these same things. I think from, like... uh when I was checking out Amazon, like Invincible was like one of their top rated shows on there, wasn't it? It might have been. Or it was like highly watched, I should say, right? Oh. Uh, like it shows like, oh, what's the most popular? Yeah. Maybe it's just the algorithm just saying watch Invincible. Maybe. But, I don't know. I, I just, I would like to see so much more of that. I, I had another thing I was trying to think of. There was another thing I would like to see at Comic-Con, but I don't think they will do it. Oh, I've heard Netflix isn't going, and I think that's like the dumbest thing possible. You don't capitalize on Avatar The Last Airbender. You don't capitalize on Arcane coming out later this year. You don't capitalize on the success of One Piece because they had all those posters for One Piece everywhere when we were last there. Um, I'm trying to think what other Netflix shows are there. Stranger Things? You don't capitalize on the final season unless the final season comes out after the next Comic-Con. I think that'll be the absolute dumbest thing. Cobra Kai is another thing to Mm -hmm. not Cobra Kai's newest season starts the week prior and then it's split up into two more parts. I was going to say this is the last little bit of Cobra Kai. Yeah, this is it. So this would be the last Comic-Con for them. Wow. And again, another just dumb choice. So yeah, I don't know. I don't work there. So don't hate on me. Uh, Netflix, I, I still like some of your movies. <laughs> Anyways, let's jump into this. All right. You ready? Yeah. These are our viewer questions. First one comes from FilmZ154. Rank the following from best to worst. Breakfast, lunch, dinner. Oh, dude. It's easy. Breakfast is the best. I okay. I am a best. I love breakfast for dinner, breakfast for lunch. Mm-hmm. If It's about having something savory with something sweet with it. Yeah. I What's your gotta... go-to breakfast meal? Ooh. Not worrying about calories or anything like that. Not worrying like about that. calories mm-hmm. or anything. Country fried steak with a pancake on the side. Oh, 
So country fried steak I'm with starving. some okay. hash browns. You get like an egg or two cracked on yeah. top of it. Oh, so good. so good. Okay, next one. Um, I guess I would have to do like a dinner. Is second place? Yeah. Okay. Because I'm big into like dinner foods. Like steak is really good. Yeah. Um, barbecue. Although people can have barbecue for lunch. I mean, barbecues exist during yeah. the middle of the day. So that's where I would probably go. And then lunch is last. Yeah. Okay. I feel like I have like a lunch meal because I have to have a lunch meal. At least that's for me. Okay. Uh, I would basically do the same thing as you. I love breakfast food so much. Uh, Waffles are like my life. But like you said, country fried steak, so good. My wife the other day asked me what I wanted to eat for dinner, and I jokingly told her chicken strips and waffles. She fucking made me chicken strips and waffles. that sounds so good. Bro, it was, I put them over, I poured syrup. Oh, my God. The best thing I've actually ever had was when I went to South by Southwest, the film festival back in 2019. I was like fucking two in the morning. We get out of a screening and I'm starving and there's this diner. It's the only place open. I bought four pancakes, like four stack. And then they put brisket and chicken fingers on it, top of it. And automatically they already have syrup. Oh, bro. It was the most fucking good thing I've ever had. Oh, that sounds. I don't know if it was because it was like two in the morning Mm -hmm. or if it was just that good, but it was great. Oh, all right. Thank you so much for that question. And the last question, because we take one to two, make sure to submit them when I ask for them on my YouTube channel. We got, I don't know how to pronounce your name, so I apologize, but it's G- Gilaris3974 asks, what inspired you to start YouTube and the podcast? Now, you can talk more on the podcast side of it. I can talk both. Do you want to start or me? Um, I guess I can start. Okay, go with um, it. What inspired you to want to start doing this? Honestly, it, it was you who kind of inspired me. Um, I always thought about like YouTube content creation mm-hmm. in general. There's always been a lot of like funny gaming videos. Like for me, my media consumption when it comes to like watching stuff, yeah, it was never really much movies or like shows. Although if it was a good or a banger show, I would watch it, of course. Yeah. Except for Inception, apparently. But, um, <laughs> don't remind me. I, I sometimes I forget what things you haven't seen I know, and I get terrible. like, I'm, I'm like less mad, but, um, gaming YouTube channels were like my thing growing up. And just the fact that like you can make something and just be fun in yourself. And for me, like when I was having a tough time, I would watch a gaming YouTube channel mm-hmm. and just like watch this person play a game and go through some silly situation it would make me laugh and i think that's what inspired me to really push this podcast because i want to do something that someone else did for me and it's like make something entertaining and have fun with it and maybe it will help someone who might have just had a really shitty day and just needs to escape and finds that sometimes i'm funny and you are funny i think that would be a really good dream for me to have is just to make people laugh and make people's days less crummy. I love that. So, um, th- yeah, I mean that, that's, that's a great thing uh, that you said. Uh, the reason I started a YouTube channel was for a lot of reasons. Um, one, it was felt like I had nowhere to talk movies with people. Um, I had, and I've told this person the story before, but there was a time when I went over to a couple of friends' houses And they already had a bet on when I would make a movie reference. And I made it within like 20 seconds of entering the room. (laughs) And like that, it rubbed me, like I was okay with it. Like, was I a little bitter and pissed off that day from that? Yeah, but you know, they're not wrong. But I wanted a place where I could go and talk movies and TV. And obviously the internet sucks sometimes with people commenting and like not respecting your opinion. Yeah. But I've, I've gotten over those ones and it's more of just... I just want someone to talk about movies and TV with, Mm -hmm. even if it's myself, but I can talk into a camera and I can share my opinion and then you might like it too. Or maybe you disagree and we can have a nice conversation. Like how I say nice conversation. Yes. If you come at me attacking me, I'm going to fucking attack you back. But that's why I started YouTube and it's kind of just evolved from there. Some people that went to my wedding was from YouTube, Cody uh, Ren flew all the way from the fucking United Kingdom. That's really cool. And I've just had grown friends from it. But the one thing I've always wanted to do with YouTube 
is bring my friends who are not on social media or not in these pieces and make them and make people discover them because I think they're a talent. And I think Phil being on here is one of those talents that every time I have a conversation with him, I'm like, I want, I I wish I could record this all the time and share this because it's podcasting for me. Isn't just, um, Oh, it's content. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want the podcast to grow. Yes. I want it, but I want people to discover my friends and I want people to discover our conversations because I think they're fun. And I think when you listen to a podcast, it's because you like the people talking. Maybe yeah. you don't care. Like I listen to a ton of podcasts where I don't care what they're talking about. I just like the people talking. That's fair. I don't listen to podcasts because of the topic. I know a lot of people do, but I will listen to the, every podcast episode, no matter what they're talking about, as long as I like the two people. Mm-hmm. And for me, creating this podcast was so I could have my friend Phil on. I could have Tyler on. And I can have people discover you guys because I love you guys so much. Oh, and you, that's, of course, dude. And that's why I like creating this. And that's why I want to have more guests on here eventually. And eventually, we just bought something that will hopefully allow us to have up to four people. That'd be crazy. To where, yeah, to where maybe some episodes, it's not just We're gonna two of us. going to need a talking stick. Uh, yeah. We're also going to need a fucking bigger desk. <laughs> <laughs> but... I love that about us, and that was my inspiration was to do this, and also to be able to talk about other things, um, not just about movies, yeah. sometimes TV, sometimes smaller movies, sometimes video games too, mm-hmm. and that's what I've loved about this, and that's why I also like having this channel is because we can do other things, and again, just those are my inspirations. I think there are so many cool people in this world that don't have their outlet to talk and share their opinion. And am I incredibly jealous that Phil's clip out of Starship Troopers is the highest viewed video so far on the YouTube channel for Into the Geekverse? Yeah, but it's cool because it was a good review. You haven't even got shit on it yet, man. That you like once you get your first shitty comment, you'll win. Like (laughs) I love it. But yeah, so my inspiration's a lot like one, I just felt lonely talking about movies. And two, I just want people to discover if I could get my wife on this podcast, you guys don't even fucking understand. Like, she is so shy that like I wish I could record half her conversations and half her opinions. Um, that's why we're gonna do an audio only one, so she can't see the comments. Oh, <laughs> but anyways, that's my inspiration. Uh, thank you so much for sharing this. And uh, if you are ever planning on doing a YouTube channel or a podcast, just do it. Just start. Yeah. Um, I will tell you right now, the equipment I use. I mean, honestly, oh, someone's out there. Uh, the microphone Coco. and all this, that was the most expensive piece. Coco's trying to collect rent right now. Oh, yeah, Coco, yeah. Coco, yeah. shout out to Grandpa for letting us use uh, the spare room and uh, the dog, too, yeah. Coco. Anyways, Phil, uh, I think it's time to go. I think it is. It's about that time mark, isn't it? Yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching this. Thank you so much. I really like that last question. I really yeah, like that. Really cool. Yeah. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this San Diego Comic-Con preview, our reviews of random stuff. Um, me figuring out that Phil once again has never seen something. Uh, Despicable Me is just fucking blows my mind. You didn't see Top Gun last week. I, I think I'm just going to start like building up this rep rapport of like yeah. all these things you haven't experienced. <sighs> I'm going to talk to your mom. Um, <laughs> but yeah, dude. Um, I'm so excited. The next time you guys see us together, we will be at San Diego Comic-Con. Uh, I think we're, our goal is to do one podcast a day out there, correct? Mm-hmm. Right? Is that what yeah. we're aiming for? So Wednesday, Thursday will definitely be the spoiler review of Deadpool and Wolverine. Most likely when we say like Wednesday, Thursday, it's usually the day after that happens, the yeah. recording will go up. Marvel right now, we are planning to try and do a live stream on the Zach Pope Reviews channel. After the panel goes up, we're going to run and go okay. find somewhere and then I'll upload it to the audio. But uh, I definitely think like a podcast, or either that or just like um, something that we could do, like a quick highlight together. Yeah. Like just like an overview of the day, whether it's like 10 minutes or something. Yeah. Just something depends. small. And, and yeah. that's totally fine. Like I'm totally fine doing that. Even like I don't expect these episodes to be an hour mm. Deadpool and Wolverine spoiler review might be. Yeah. But everything else, probably the Marvel thing will probably be a little bit longer, but everything else will probably be about like 20, 30 minutes or so. Who knows might join us. We always have friends out there. Yeah. Maybe, exactly. maybe someone will maybe want we'll to join us. Maybe we'll a random person off the street too and ask them. 
Oh yeah, we're planning on doing that. We're gonna interview random people. Yeah, I that'd think. Be cool. Yeah, and then Phil wants to shoot a vlog. That'll be cool. Yeah, a vlog. Just get some B-roll out there and just take some journey, just for my own personal interest. Of Your just practice like, too. Yeah, good practice. I think it'd just be cool to just always have these things documented with my best friend. Yeah, I, I love I it. I think it'd be a cool thing to share with you guys as well, just like our journey, our road trip over there, mm -hmm. what we do. And, uh, yeah, I think that'd be cool. Awesome. Well, I never know how to end these things. So I'm just going to say, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Stay classy. Inspirational, man. Yeah. Got to leave with that. So goodbye, everybody. Mm -hmm.